The topic for today, Postgres as a strategic tool. Um, so my plan is in the next, uh, what have we, uh, 45, 50 minutes, take you through a little bit of this agenda. Um, I wrote, who is EDB? What I'm actually wanting to do is actually take you a little bit through where did Postgres come from? How does EDB fit in this picture? And, and kind of where do we position ourselves as, as a first introduction? I, I already saw that a couple of uh, attendees have a bit deeper experience with EDB, with Postgres. So that might be a little bit of a repetition, but let's, let's see what happens. Um, and then kind of dive into, you know, if we have Postgres, how can we see this as a, as a tool that you can use really strategically to drive some of your projects and some of the, the ambitions you might have within your company or organization forward, actually to, to really uh, get benefit from, from this thing called Postgres. And actually, what, what are some of the characteristics that it brings um, for you to kind of go forward with this. So let's just dive in. Um, who is EDB? And with that, um, I always like to start with this super intricate um, slide that actually talks about history. Um, there was a guy called Michael, Dr. Michael Stonebreaker, and he paraphrased, um, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Uh, this for me always was a very major driver to start with a little bit of history. Where actually does Postgres come from? So I'll be super brief. Um, 1970s, Christopher Date and Theodore Cott wrote relational database theory, which is the foundation um, of basically the definition of how we work with data compared to the traditional systems, which were hierarchical databases or what we would call today document databases, you know, the, the Mongos and Cassandras of this world. Um, Date and Cod wrote that they implemented that in System R, a first real implementation of relational database theory. They did that at IBM. Um, IBM, the mecca of relational databases. IBM also created DB2 based on relational database theory. In that time, uh, there was this guy running around in, in um, Silicon Valley. He was working on a project for the, for the American government. And he was actually looking for a bit of technology to, to answer some of the requirements of that project. Um, and he got wind of System R and adopted it and, and kind of created a solution for that. And he named his solution after the project he was working for. Um, as you might all be able to guess, this guy was Larry Ellison and his company, um, which was named Software Laboratories, was then named Oracle after the Oracle project for the CIA. Um, so this is where Oracle technology is based on the same technology as um, IBM's DB2, which is System R. There was another guy also looking for a project to start at, at Berkeley University. Um, and as I named him already quickly before, um, Dr. Michael Stonebreaker, Turing Award winner, also got wind of um, System R and actually started at University of Berkeley devising Berkeley Ingress. Um, Ingress, based on relational database theory, was his implementation. Um, he took Ingress to the commercial mark, created Ingress Corporation that we might all know. Uh, which exists still today. Um, got a little bit tired of that. There are, is an interesting webinar. If you would search for um, the land sharks are on the squawk box, you will find um, a presentation by Mike Stonebreaker talking about his time with Ingress. Um, he learned some key learnings there and actually returned to the University of Berkeley to start the post Ingress project in which he implemented some of these learnings which of one was um, build an extensibility system in his post ingress project. Post ingress became Postgres. Um, Postgres was given to the community, the Postgres Global Development Group, headed by um, Bruce Momjum. Uh, Bruce, who is still or kind of Mr. Postgres himself. Um, and actually, that brings us to today. Um, so, Postgres has this very strong foundation 
based on system R, based on relational database theory, is a very sturdy and proven product. And that's quickly what I wanted to um, show here. So that brings us a little bit to what is then EDB, founded in 2004. Um, and as you can see in the very first two pictures, Dr. Michael Stonebreaker, the Turing Award winner, is still an EDB board advisor. So that means we are so close to the foundations of Postgres that the well, founding father of the principles of Postgres is still kind of part of the EDB family. Um, the second picture, Mr. Bruce Momjun, what I just said, the, the first man that actually started and founded the Postgres Global Development Group is part of EDB, is one of my colleagues. Together with Peter Eisentraut, together with um, Dave Page, both three uh, Postgres core team members and some other core committers um, and, and people who are important in uh, Postgres development are part of the Postgres or the, the EDB team, 